everyone, Christy Knight here for Carpenter TV, and I've got Phil Galfon here in the studio today. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me, Christy. Well, I just wanted to catch up with you. So, what have you been up to before the World Series of Poker? Um, you know, more of the same. Um, playing online, although games have died down a little bit uh, mm -hmm. over the past few months, and just kind of hanging out. I'm still getting adjusted. I just moved to New York. Mm -hmm. um, about now, tell me about it. You're getting construction done on your on your uh, house yeah. in New York. Tell me about mm -hmm. that. They actually just started, they were supposed to, I thought they were going to start like eight months ago, but I was wrong, I was way off. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they just started now. And basically like the building that I ended up um, buying the place in, I really, really liked it, but they didn't have a unit big enough for me because I, I wanted to have two bedrooms and an office mm -hmm. and all, all those were sold. So they ended up convincing me to buy two smaller ones and combining them, which was a terrible idea. They made it seem like it was going to be really easy. Uh, it's been such a process, but basically... Well, tell me why it's not so easy. You wanted something specific, right? Okay, honestly, I, I know what you're talking about. That's not why. It's, it was hard just because construction's hard. Oh, okay. But I am getting, um, in addition to like, a staircase between the two floors, a slide going down. Um, <laughs> Did you get to pick out a slide and everything? Yeah, they had a few different options. Um, but one with like a stainless steel one, and it's, it's kind of like C-shaped, you know, mm -hmm. curved, and there were... There are like a few um, rules, like it had to be full circle enclosed at the top. Um, so, for, so like, other people have actually done this. Apparently, There's... actually, they said that I was the first um, residential slide in New York City. Oh, okay. That's but the company that we talked to that's doing it, it does like they just make slides. That's all they do. So, oh, okay. I guess they had all these guidelines about how I had to do it. Now that'll be done after the series. Not quite. They said. Um, they're aiming for September 1st, okay. but I've heard that oh, I shouldn't trust that. Now you also have, you're also getting a pool table that's clear. And I was trying to explain this to, to some of my friends, that the felt is actually clear. I feel like I'm just showing off now on camera. Um, I'm sorry, we don't have to talk about that. We no, can, just, we can uh, edit, edit that out. It's no big deal. Okay, no, it's fine. You can keep it in. Okay. But yeah, it's just the... The felt, I guess, is made out of, I haven't gotten it yet, but I ordered it, and mm -hmm. the felt's made out of, like, some kind of plastic or something that's, that plays like felt. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit skeptical, but... We'll see how it turns out. We'll see how it turns out. Those are the only two things I've, like, spent a lot of money on, so... Okay. Well, now, no, you're here at the series. Mm -hmm. You've gotten to play two events. You, you went pretty deep in the 40K, and yeah. according to your blog, you weren't as upset as you thought you were going to be when you got knocked out. Yeah, I didn't care at all, and I, I guess the way that, um, given that cash games have gotten so big, even an event as big as the 40k, it's just like, um, I mean, money's still money, and cashing for whatever the min was, like, 80, 70 or 80, 70 or 80 mm -hmm. would definitely be nice, but I don't look at it as, like, money, I just, because you can't look at what you're playing with as money, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of like, a seventy thousand dollars swing is not is pretty routine for me mm -hmm. playing at the big games online. So I'm really just focused on trying to win one when I play. Mm -hmm. So had I gotten like five handed and then lost, I would have been pretty upset, I think. But at that point, I, I still didn't feel like I was that close, you know. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that when you're playing in a small elite field like like the forty k, mm -hmm. you aren't really looking to reduce variance. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Well, like one of the main things uh, in tournament poker, uh, especially in soft field tournament poker, um, is that you have such a big edge over the field that you want to stay in the tournament as long as possible and taking a 60-40 flip is not a good idea mm -hmm. for your tournament life when um, you know you can kind of hang in there and exploit bigger edges. So um, that's the way I approach most tournaments, but when you're playing in a field with a lot of tough players where, uh, yeah, where your edge isn't as huge, uh, that's less of a concern because you're staying around to exploit big edges. There aren't going to be as big edges to exploit, so um, you got to take those 60/40s and things like that. Okay. Now the second event you played was the $5,000 PLO mm -hmm. event, which is kind of the same event that you won last year, except without rebuys. Right. Yeah. What do you think about the World Series not having rebuys this year? Um, I know there's a big debate about it. I I, I like the rebuy events, um, not just because I won one, but I just think that uh, I really think everybody enjoys them. The uh, like the players that that like throwing a lot of money at them and trying to get deep <laughs> in those tournaments, they enjoy it. And then the yeah. players that like that don't like that, that are like have 
smaller bankrolls, they get to play with people like Ivy at their table, mm -hmm. just chucking in money. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody's happy, really. Um, and, yeah, I guess I, I just don't agree with some of the reasons against, uh, or for taking them out. So you've only played two events this year. Yeah. Why, why not so many? Honestly, like, like the last couple years I've played, maybe 15 to 20 each year, mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to do it again, but... I don't know, I just played the 40k and did not have fun, and also I came out here um, like two weeks early because I thought they were going to start construction then, which they didn't, mm -hmm. um, but I was just here hanging out and having a good time with friends, and um, at this point, like I've been here so many years, I like have a lot of friends here, and mm -hmm. people to see and catch up with, and I've kind of just been doing a lot of hanging out, yeah. and um, I don't know, the way I look at it is, I guess I thought that, I mean, Tournaments are cool, and winning a tournament was really cool, but I kind of decided that it's maybe not worth all of the stress and um, things like that that playing tournaments puts on me, at least, because I know some people enjoy them, but I personally don't. Okay. Now, like you said, you got to catch up with a lot of friends, mm -hmm. and I love reading your blog on Bluefire, uh, bluefirepoker.com, because you, you talk about a lot of your your experiences with your friends and everything. And one thing I wanted to ask you about is I remember reading a blog where you were talking about uh, Z-Dang, one of your friends, and you could not figure out if you or he owed each other money. And it was like a huge sum of money for people who are, yeah. who are watching. Maybe like 400000 and It was 400000 Yeah, Actually, technically that was hack. Okay. But oh, okay. same thing. Excuse me. They, <laughs> they share their money. So I did it. Um, yeah, I... Uh, obviously, poker players aren't the best... Uh, accounts and like I haven't um, you know you have like money moving through accounts and also especially playing like the nosebleeds you can't keep tons of money online so mm -hmm. a lot of times if you run bad you have to borrow money from somebody else and um, or lend money so so this is a common thing because we I saw on high six poker Tom Dwan and Alari Sahamis they were they, they couldn't figure stuff out either and everybody's watching and they're like how do they not keep track of yeah. like half a million dollars yeah well I I mean I usually am better than this and yeah I mean I again I don't want to say that four hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean a lot to me because it does but I when it happens so often it's kind yeah of like, but for whatever reason I um I guess it, at at different points like every couple months I'll just add up see how much money I have so mm -hmm. like add up, okay, this is what's in my bank account, this is what's in my full tilt account, this is what's in my stars account, et cetera, et cetera. And so I added all that up and had X amount of money. And then about a month later, was talking to Hack, and uh, I was like, okay, so I owe you that 900000 He's like, you owe me 500000 <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm pretty positive. Because it had been like a month ago that I had written that down and thought, so I'd known that yeah. for at least a month. So, so then... Knowing that you only owed like five hundred, right? It was an extra four hundred that. That was really nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> actually, like I was, I had just like recently paid for condos and was having to pay for construction and paying taxes, mm -hmm. and uh, Anne was going through a downswing, so I was pretty low on money. Um, so that was pretty helpful. Yeah. But we spent, I mean, we spent like five hours going through like <laughs> aim logs and transfer histories and mm -hmm. like trying to see what every transfer was from. Um, so well, that's good that you got it figured out. Yeah. How? By, by the way, how is? Bluefire Poker doing and, and what's new? It's doing well. The um, my customer response has been really good. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we still are relatively new. We started, um, I guess, in January. Mm -hmm. um, but we just did. We just had our hundredth video, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, a little milestone for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. It's more of the same. It's a lot more work than I expected it to be. Just because, um, I guess, when you when you think about making training videos, you're like, okay, well one hour video of work for like an hour, hour and a half, but mm -hmm. you're just to put a lot more time into it um, to make it good. And um, so it has taken up a lot of my time, but I do actually enjoy teaching mm -hmm. and I do enjoy that like people are getting a lot from it and letting me know, so it's been going well overall. Awesome. Well, okay, so now we're a little more than halfway through this series. What's next for you? I may or may not play the 10K PLO on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure yet, and... If you can get yourself in the mood, you'll play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, also I might have friends in town, I okay. might not. And, uh, same thing, I guess the, like, three events that I've seen coming up are the 10K PLO, 10K Parliament Hold'em, mm -hmm. and the 50K Horse, um, but there's a good chance I don't play any of them. <laughs> I don't know. But you're gonna play the main event. I'm gonna play the main event for sure. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, we'll look for you. 
to see if you're playing the main event, and thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Chris Tiernett with Phil Galfon for Card Player TV.